Good morning. With experience being such a big part of communication today, we have with us Aurelia Noel, Global Head of Innovation and Digital Transformation at NCF, given sharing her insight. Hello, Aurelia. Hello, Simran. Aurelia, firstly, I just like I just mentioned, experience is such an important part of communication. But what is the challenge in driving data, a data-driven, consistent, omni-channel customer experience for a customer which is present across so many platforms? Thank you. That's a really good question. So, as you said, experience is everything. And today, the most, I mean, the biggest challenge is consistency, is the ability to have a consistent message across the different touch points. And I think for that, I would go back to something that I've written a bit before around the four E's, because experience itself is not uh, enough. So when it comes to the four E's, we're talking about experience. So ensuring that you have a relevant experience, no matter the touch point, and that every touch point is here to drive impact. Um, then you will have everywhere, which is the ability of being convenient. So your brand needs to have a level of convenience for their consumers, because we know that uh, consumers are 1% of the time thinking about your brand and 99% of the time really living your brand. So it's important to have your brand as in kind of an everywhere ecosystem. And value exchange and that exchange is very important to experience. I would say that you can't have experience if you don't have exchange. We live in a world where data is um, alpha, where data is paramount, but it's also a very scarce and valuable resource. And I think one of the things that you need to do through value exchange and experience is to ensure that that data is protected, but also given at the point of consent. Uh, and then the final one will be evangelism, which is again part of the experience, because when we talk about a brand, it's not only about talking uh, about the product or talking about the ethos of the brand, but again, the value that the brand is bringing into people's everyday life and so ends the, the evangelism and the opportunity to build ecosystem around your brand beyond just your brand equity or your product, but really kind of creating a world in which your brand can uh, thrive. Uh, so, taking ahead, when you mentioned you know the four E's, this was in a relationship to high street retailers, right? So, what advice would you give to retailers who have been impacted by the pandemic and taken and you know this is a space which B two C players have kind of taken over? So, what would you tell, say, a normal retailer? about how they should now focus on experience? So again, I think it all comes down to the consumer. So the first thing is really uh, to understand their audience um, and understand the touch point to build their audience. I mean, we often talk about uh, digital transformation. I prefer to talk about digital elevation, which is to say, you know, when we talk about uh, digital elevation, it's a really change in mindset. It's a paradigm shift from digital being a, a channel to digital being in everything we do because the people we talk to no matter whether you're i street retailer or a brand they're everywhere online and it's for i street retailer it's again that idea of ecosystem and community that would really help them thrive in a digital first world we live in a world today where there is a new technology practically every month we're talking about augmented reality, we're talking about holograph, we're talking about chat, GPT, generated AI. So as a marketer, what excites you? What do you see is going to be the next big thing? So I think everyone is talking about AI. So I would say kind of AI for me is an important part of how technology will develop. Um, and AI needs to be used as a force for good. So when we are thinking about AI, it's about how can we drive better automation, better efficiency, better effectiveness in everything we do so that people can focus on creativity, ideation and curation of content. Um, I think there's a, there's also, uh, when we talk about AI, then a lot of people are still skeptic or still a bit scared about what AI will bring. Um, and then there, what I would like to do is give you the example of what we the work we've done with Intel around uh, human certified. So what we're saying is that by, I think it's by 2026, nearly 90% of the content online will be generated or will be helped through AI. And with Intel, what we've done is we've worked around how can we ensure 
that that content is safe for human consumption and that content is really protecting um, the consumer, protecting the society and protecting the brands. So are there any tick boxes brands and agencies should adhere to when it comes to technology and innovation? Because while it is uh, immersive, it's also pervasive. Yes, so that's again a very good question. I think we, I, we need to start with the positive and I think when it comes to the positive, it's really about bravery and it's about that ability to be early adopters um, and lead the industry and when it comes to that it's really about how do we use the technology of today understand the impact that will have on consumer on brand on society so that we can create a better world so that would be kind of nearly the positive of it and the role that we should take as active world citizen when it comes to those technology and as agencies and advertisers um, we have not only the investment, but we also have the authority and ultimately the duty to protect those people and to protect the society. I think the the, the other thing around uh, AI and why it excites me so much is it gives us an opportunity to be transparent, uh, to to drive a positive change, um, and really kind of to to bring again. You know, not being scared about automation but really embrace automation so that we can spend most of our time on curation ideation and creativity okay. you know just going back to your earlier answer you said 2026 mm -hmm. what we what how will ai be at that point as you said by 2026 you see it you can just give me like a sneak peek and how do you see ai in 2026 it's just Years away. So I think we are at a pivotal point today where two things can happen. Either we decide to go the positive route, and this is where uh, today agencies and brands are working together in order to deliver on that positive, where AI will help us uh, again um, automate our, our, the, uh, the areas of our life uh, that could be automated. Uh, that will help us uh, again build better uh, apps, uh, build better uh, ways or better use cases to to help people's lives. And then one thing that we have to think about is again talking about that pivotal point is we also at a point where we can make the wrong choices. And I think today, as branders, as agencies, our role is to make the right choices towards AI. Uh, and also, can you tell us about any of the proprietary tools in the Denso stable to help clients drive growth and engagement and navigate this space? So, do you refer more to just the proprietary tools which you have, which you use So, I would, I would say from, from our perspective, you know, creating proprietary tools um, have been what we've been doing for the last hundred years. So, um, thinking about how we usually, we, we today utilize AI into what we do. Again, we're using it more from an automation perspective. So ensuring that tasks that can be automated will be automated. So one of those example is Pipes, um, which is one of our um, governance tools, so tools that enable us to have um, great hygiene when it comes to campaign creation, when it comes to campaign optimization. So again, the team can spend more of their time on their strategy and consulting with the client and really help them transform their business. Um, and the other thing I would say is uh, our CCS tool, which has been our proprietary um, kind of customer panel since 1995, I believe. Um, and there now we have motivation and what motivation is bringing us within the CCS panel is is enables us to really create campaigns that are relevant to every audience down to their motivation. Uh, and again, we were talking about experience at the beginning and understanding kind of the people's innermost innovation is also helping us and helping our clients build a better experience for them. Finally, you know, you're very passionate about purposeless brands. So can you talk about any of your work that you're very proud of in this sphere and any brand that you believe has got their purposeless <coughs> initiatives spot on? So I would say, uh, you know, getting closer to home, uh, Dentsu is a company that has done amazingly well when it comes to um, when it comes to purpose, when it comes to social. I'm myself a part of the DNI committee for, uh, for Global. So... Part of my role is also to um, empower 
uh, social impact and social impact beyond just sustainability and climate literacy, but really thinking about uh, gender equality, protecting minorities, getting more people, uh, more, more of the younger people into media. So I would say when it comes to a purposeful brand, and if I have to take the best example, I think it's it's really, I mean, for me, Dan Su is doing really, really well. Uh, I will not be able to comment really on uh, on other brands because I'm not as close to them as I am to Densu being in the company for nearly seven years now. Um, and in terms of um, you know the areas in which um, kind of I, uh, campaigns that we're very proud of, so the Quagga campaign that we uh, did during lockdown around uh, you know food waste is one of those campaigns where um, you know we're really taking both kind of technology, innovation, digital transformation to be a force for good. And those, these are the campaigns that I'm very proud of. Thank you so much, Irene.